All right, guys. So what is it about the Springer that we love? What is it about this bike that just has set the motorcycle world on fire ever since it came into existence? Well, let's, we're about to dive into it, but stay tuned at the end of this video for a surprise because I have in fact named this motorcycle. Let's dive into it. guys welcome back to this episode of rolling with t-bone as we are rolling down the road on the newly named springer you gotta stick around if you are new here welcome in my name is t-bone i shoot motorcycle related content and well any kind of content really if you are old here welcome back you know what's going on as we discussed the harley davidson springer what is it about this bike that just makes it so freaking cool well let's talk about that fact for just a minute what is it about this bike that is just so cool and from my perspective as owning one everything about this bike is cool every single thing that from the front to the back of this bike to me just screams cool because out front you have that distinctive undeniable springer front end now guys the springer front end is not a new concept in any stretch of the imagination somebody will have to google this and give me the exact date but i'm thinking it was either late 40s or early 50s that harley davidson used a girder type springer on their stock motorcycles so the springer is not alien with the the motorcycle community but what is alien about this bike is the fact that harley davidson and again this bike debuted and this bike was born just like the fat boy just like the Dyna, so many other bikes this bike is a creation of one willie g davison now 1988 was the beginning of the springer that we know and love 1988 model soft tail springer was debuted to huge huge fanfare guys everybody who saw this springer immediately fell in love with the springer now my springer here is a 1992 model so i'm right in that retro line uh, the springer again as the fat boy and terminator as the dyna and pretty well much everything uh the soft tail springer has been all over television and tv shows it was featured when it first came out harley davidson put a lot of publicity behind this motorcycle uh it was on baywatch used uh fast forward was a tv series uh in the late 80s early 90s featured a springer and our old boy mickey rourke how fitting is it that we're going to talk about mickey and a harley davidson when we're riding on the springer mickey rourke now there's a movie that you're going to probably not know of but i'm going to talk to you about it in uh, 1989 mickey customized a springer for a movie called wild orchid now some of you purists and fans of mickey know which movie i'm talking about those of you newer generations that haven't never heard of the movie it was made in 1989 
Uh, at this point in time, Mickey Rourke was kind of becoming known as the motorcycle man. And he was in this, <laughs> he was kind of in this situation where old Mickey was probably one of the most polarizing and controversial people to come from the 80s and the 90s. Let's just be honest about it. Mickey was out there. Mickey was polarizing. He was controversial. And Mickey did a couple of movies that were very controversial that were actually labeled as erotic movies. One being Wild Orchid and the other being the more famous Nine and a Half Weeks. Uh, well, I believe it was uh, Mickey Rourke and Kim Basinger in Nine and a Half Weeks. And Nine and a Half Weeks, you know, Back then, they were shooting us young men in the heart with Kim Basinger in nine and a half weeks. Now, Wild Orchid, <coughs> Psycho Cycles had built a bike for the movie. Rick, Mickey's fingerprints were all over the bike. I'll try to find a clear, good picture of the, of the bike to put on this video. But if I can't, let me describe it for you. What you had was a first year production, 1988. Harley Davidson Softail Springer. It had a bobbed rear fender, a slick yellow paint job, a solo seat, setting on spoke rims, 16 to 18 inch ape hangers, black ape hangers, and it was just a cool looking bike. And uh, of course, Mickey rode the bike throughout the movie and uh, I had actually forgotten about that movie until I started doing research for Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man and just a single picture of Mickey riding on a bike that had a Springer front end popped up and uh, I thought okay well that'll work for the Springer video when I shoot it. Research came through and it was Wild Orchid. So the Springer guy since 1988 has been on television series after television series movies television series movies 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 I stopped researching when I made it all the way to 2016 because it was done in a on a TV show in 2016 so the Springer has been around for a while and the Springer has claimed the crown as one of the coolest bikes Harley Davidson has ever built now the Springer came through in the mid 90s and Harley Davidson built a Harley Davidson Springer bad boy uh, it had a couple of different options a different type of paint scheme and they call it the bad boy they either did it for 96 and 97 or they just did it for 96 only it may have been a one-year one-off bike I can't remember but uh, cool bikes I know Billy Lane has a uh, bad boy he done a video series on his YouTube channel about where he put a boy Coddington swing arm which is from the mid 90s. He did a bunch of retro parts on it and made just a good looking Springer. But what I love about the Springer if I'm just going to try to break it down and put it into words is I'm steampunk I guess at heart because I love the gizmoness, I love the gadgetry, I love the way that it makes everything look like it's clockwork. I kind of like, I like the mechanical of it. I like the mechanism of it, if that makes sense. Because the Springer, you feel like you're being let in on a secret when you look at the Springer front end. Like you're not supposed to see what the inner workings of the front end looks like. And then along comes the Springer and just puts it all out front on display, puts it on front street, does not try to hide anything from it. And personally, I think that's just cool as crap. That's just, that's just so cool. But yeah, I mean, when you ride the Springer, you get a different ride. This bike does not ride like any other bike you will you you will ride. Uh, and the Springer front end, guys, I'm going to tell you what: 60s and 70s choppers. They took the Springer front end for a wild ride. 
six foot long extended front ends, girder front ends, springer front ends. I've heard these old chopper guys say that if your chopper does not have a springer front end on it, then it's not a chopper, it's not a bobber. They say that if your bike does not have a springer front end on it, it's not a custom bike at all. That, you know, opinions vary. Not everybody likes the springer front end. Not everybody can afford a Springer front end, if we're being real about it. Now this front end that's on this bike is the stock Harley-Davidson front end, which I like. I, I have no problem with that. I don't need some big aftermarket front end screaming at me for three, four grand. But, you know, I have... I, you know the Springer for the Springers on choppers that came out of the 60s and the 70s is commonplace, but I personally can't subscribe to that if it doesn't have a Springer front end on it, then it's not a chopper. I don't subscribe to that because Captain America's bike, Billy, you know, Billy bike. There's been a lot of great looking choppers that didn't have Springer front ends on them, but. You know, I digress because I'm not getting into that argument with nobody. But I think what we love about these bikes is this bike here particularly for me just has that aggressive stance. Low, lean, it looks like it's ready to kick through your front door and consume your soul. Uh, just bad, bad bikes. And of course my bike has been lowered uh, it has the fat bob tanks on it, which now the bike that Mickey Rourke used in Wild Rourke it did have the fat bob split tanks like the FXR had from Marley Davidson Marlboro Man. That's how I knew Mickey Springer Prince was all over the building and design of that bike. Uh, the yellow paint job, I, I'm not against the yellow paint job if it's done right and it's on the right application. But this one was done right, and I believe for the bike it was the right application because it went along with the theme of wild orchid. You think orchids, you think flowers, you think flowers, you think yellow. So there was some time put into the thought of that and building that. But yeah, guys, there you have it, the Springer. Uh, I love this one. I, you know, when I traded the V-Rod for it, a lot of people question why would you do that because these bikes don't come along very often and I even had a buddy of mine at work because I got in an offhand conversation one day and we were talking about bikes and riding and stuff and I made the offhand comment <laughs> sorry sorry Sorry, <laughs> not sorry. That, oh, I love this bike. I love the sound, and this bike will move, guys. It's got that S and S engine on it. This, this bike will move. Don't don't be fooled. <laughs> oh, I love the sound of this bike. I'm sorry, my inner child's playing right now. But uh, we were in an offhand conversation about baggers, dressers, whatever you want to call them, and I had made the offhand comment that yeah, sometimes I do miss having a bagger for the convenience of storage saddlebags and trunk i had that with the midnight express and i always carried a lot of stuff with me anyway like when i rode to work if you you know tools different boots for when i'm doing different stuff at work but anyway he said well why not use uh, blue moon or your springer and get you a bagger and I just, I had to explain it to him the best way I knew how. I'm just not a bagger guy no more. Uh, if I ever did decide that I was gonna get serious about getting a bagger, it would be limited to a road glide because, or you know, a newer tour glide, meaning newer meaning from 93 to 96. Tour glides or 96 to 2001 road glide. I'm a fixed fairing guy. I, I don't like the bat wing fairing like on the electric glides. 
I just don't like the whole fairing turning with the whole front end. I'm a fixed fairing back guy, I always have been. I've owned several bikes with fixed fairings and I've always, that's just my ride, that's what I like. I like the fixed fairing. But I'm a cruiser guy. I mean, I, I'm not about the baggers no more. And it's not that they're not cool or it's not that I'm trying to go against the grain and get away from things like everybody else you know seems to be going toward the baggers i'm not trying to be the rebel and go away from the baggers that's not what's happening it's just that uh when i had the tour glide the tour glide in the center set up a little higher than a lot of other baggers did because it was an older style bike it was an 84 model uh and I'm more comfortable with a bend in my knee when I'm riding. And I had that when I was riding, but when I put my feet down on the tour glide, my legs were fully extended. And one day I put my foot down, I wasn't moving, but my right knee, when I straightened it out, it locked up and I went all the way over on the tour glide. Didn't hurt nothing, didn't even scratch it, but that was when I pretty well much made up my mind that it was time to get rid of the tour glide. I don't need a 899 pound, 900, 999 pound, 1000 pound motorcycle. I like to ride comfortable and I like to ride on a lot of back roads and you can ride your bagger on the back road. I'm certainly not saying that you can't, but can you ride it as comfortably on the back road as I can ride my Springer or Blue Moon on the back road? Absolutely not. I mean, I'm, you know, they're just it's logic it's logically you can't do it but the Springer guys so Hollywood cool bike that's why we love the Springer is because it just it's it's a total package cool looks cool sound very desirable motorcycles these are still I don't care what year model from 1988 up these are still very desirable motorcycles mainly because people get get them and they keep them they don't trade them they don't sell them so usually when a Springer that's in good shape comes up for sale they sell out pretty quick and of course uh, you know Springer made it to the bagger world uh, with the uh, Heritage Softail Springer came out with saddlebags those were like stupid, stupid popular motorcycles. Big money motorcycles. That red and white paint scheme on those things made them huge. But yeah, the Springer guys, I've been waiting to do this video for a little while. Glad that you guys were able to come and join me with it. Drop down and let me know what you think about the Springer. Is it a cool bike or was it overrated? Maybe it, you think it wasn't as cool as all the hype. Drop down in the comments, let me know. All right, guys, thanks for coming along with me on this episode of Rolling with T-Bone as I have landed at Appalachian Mountain Rides. So I told you guys in the beginning, if you stuck around to the end of this video, you would learn the name of the Springer because I have named it. Now, it's took me a couple of weeks of just hard thinking about what I wanted to call this bike. And then just in looking at it, when I look at this bike, I think late 80s, early 90s, hard rock and roll, just straight out of the gate, hard rock. So of course it became a no brainer as I am a huge ACDC fan. The Springer will now be called Thunderstruck. So if you hang around, you'll wait, you'll see. I'll put out a short video on it. And uh, I wanna leave you guys with a question. Drop down in the comments and give me an answer what you think. Although I am a fan of the sanded down metal look, I'm really starting to think about painting this bike gloss black, maybe keeping the emblem on the side and going with a high gloss black paint job. Drop down, let me know what you think. Should I keep it sanded down metal or should I put a black paint job on it? You guys take a poll amongst yourselves and let me know. But guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Remember, like, comment, share. If you're not subscribed over on YouTube,
take a minute watch a couple of my videos and see if you like what i'm doing if you do hit that subscribe button that would be awesome but guys until the next time i'm t-bone and this has been rolling with t-bone